Okay, um, welcome to part two of the um, motion ice text explosion tutorial. Uh, now, last time we got to the point where we'd made this nice uh, atmospheric, glassy, icy looking uh, textured text. Uh, and the next stage is to make this explode into hundreds of pieces of a similar looking material. Okay, so the first thing is to create uh, a new layer so here we go one new group um, so and we're going to call this shard because we need to make um, a piece of the material that we're then going to multiply um, and use in our explosion I created this new group called shard. I go up to my media and I, I'm going to use the same image that I used to texture the text. So let's take that down and put it in the shard group. In this image I'm going to pick and isolate out a part of it. I like this shard here. And in fact I think that's the one I used in the original project. So uh, let's make sure that's selected and then let's create a bezier mask and draw around the piece I want to isolate and we close the loop. Now you can see my previous text layer is showing through so just get that out of the way for the time being I will disable its view um, and I want to also zoom in a little bit uh, if you need to move the screen around you can use the hand tool so here we go uh, I just want to see a little bit clearer um, now on the mask properties over here a little bit of roundness uh, just to take some of the edge off you can't really see that yet but when I feather the inside you will be able to see that but I want to make the fall off a bit more severe than that so Okay, and let's take the feathering. Okay, there we go. I like that. Um, if you want to see what it's like without the guides, you can do command slash. That turns the guides on and off. Um, I'm happy with that. So let's see the whole screen again. Now, I want to select we're going to make this spin so I want to select the shard and I want to make its anchor point um, a sensible place uh, when, it's, when it spins because at the moment the center point's here so any spinning motion is going to go around that point but I don't want that to happen I want it to spin around roughly the center of the object so I go down here I use the anchor point tool and I'll move that to the center there by dragging on the gray area so yeah that yeah that'll, that'll do uh, okay then I want to go to the image properties uh, and just to reduce the amount of image that the program's got to process. I'm going to turn crop on. Let's let's get it to something a bit sensible. Okay. Um, these sliders, if you once you take them to the maximum, if you want to go to further than the maximum you can click and then use your mouse up 
and down to control the, the number directly rather than relying on the sliders because the sliders only have a, a range which is common things you use but sometimes you need to go outside them. Go back to the transform tool and we want to drag that to roughly center. Right, so the next part is we need to create a particle emitter from this sh um, shard group. So we take the group to make sure it's selected and down here there's a create a particle emitter tool. So we hit that and you'll see what's happened is create a new group with the emitter in it and it's the emitter has a particle cell called shard which is referencing this shard group. It's disabled the shard group so it doesn't show through because now the emitter has taken control of that and it's uh, I can then use the emitter to create instances of them. So let's for the sake of it let's just turn down the birth rate to zero. Okay make sure your project's also at the beginning. Now we're going to increase the initial number to 10. We're going to increase the life to 10. And I'll just show you what this does. So as you can see, those 10 instances are all moving out from a central point. Let's change the speed um, to about 500. Uh, let's have a look at that. Okay, that's better. And then we probably want to add some randomness to the speed because we don't want every particle traveling at the same speed. Uh, so let's add 250 to the randomness. So they're going to be around 500 within a range of 250 randomness. So let's have a look. Okay, so that's going to be a bit more natural. Then uh, we want to also add some spin. Um, so let's add 360 to spin randomness. Okay, so let's um, add some randomness to the angle. Five degrees. Let's add some degrees on the randomness. Okay, let's um, put hundred on the spin. Let's put some spin randomness. Let's say. 270. Okay, so let's go back to see how that is. Okay, starting to look better. Okay, so now let's make it 3D. We'll keep keep these as as they are. Okay. Okay, now you can see that some appear to be going getting smaller and bigger. And this is because they're getting They're getting nearer or closer to the camera. Let's call this group Exploding Shards. Okay, now we want to make this group a 3D group. Um, okay, alright, now the next thing we can do to make it slightly more realistic is to um, make the shards uh, different sizes. So let's go down here to scale and let's find out what we think looks good as a default. Um, let's move into the project a little bit so we know um, 
was it let's have a look, yeah. Okay. Let's make the size ten percent. And then we'll add some randomness to the scale. Let's make that um yeah, let's, let's just add fifteen to the scale. Let's have a look how this looks now. Okay, that's okay. Um, obviously, we're going to use a lot more pieces than this. I mean, we're, we're experimenting here with 10 pieces. When we actually render the thing, we're going to increase that and have hundreds of pieces. So, this opacity over lifetime, we want the particles to fade away as they get older. Now this will make right so we selected this let's turn that down. So what we've done now is if you see they kinda get a little bit dimmer as they get older. Okay all right something else um, I want to do. Now we've got these spinning but actually they're not spinning in three dimensions yet so we I want to the default emitter controls only allow you to spin around one axis so I want to add a behavior to the shard which is the particle cell and I want to basic motion spin now I can spin it around a different axis there or I can do a custom one and spin it around more than one axis so what I want to do is give it spin in the other axis that I haven't used so okay so let's give it a spin rate of minus 85 and let's give it 250 around the axis and let's give it 81 around that axis. Uh, you can mess around with these parameters um, uh, however you like and decide what you, what you think looks best. A little bit of experimentation. Okay, so now we can see that this is actually spinning in three dimensions each of those particles um, now they look a little bit flat now I'm gonna leave them looking flat in this but you can simulate uh, making something flat a bit thicker by using um, particle replicators uh, but I'll, I'll do that in the part three for now where I just want to get the explosion running okay so the next thing is the next thing is um, let's add a little bit of gravity to the particle because although we can see here and that's going to look quite nice uh, adding a little bit of weight to the particles is going to make it seem a little bit more realistic so let's um, select the shard add a behavior basic motion no simulations uh, simulations and gravity right you can see now that this particle is beginning to change direction or fall downwards as it gets fades away and gets older okay okay so now we've added a little bit of gravity but I think a little bit more gravity would actually be better so let's turn up the gravity a little bit Let's give it uh, no. 48. That's it. Here we go. Yeah, it looks a bit better. The particles are a little bit heavier.